This is New Day Northwest. With the big game coming up, it's time to start thinking about what to serve your guests. I'm Amatia Dreesi, host of New Day Northwest, and we've put together some ideas for you ahead of the Super Bowl. From delicious apps to the perfect beverage pairings, here's how to keep your friends and family satisfied no matter what the outcome of the game is. Cookbook author Rosie Mays is here in the kitchen with me this morning with some great ideas. And you have your quality spices here as well. I'm of course, so, I don't leave home without it. I know, and I'm so excited you brought back your seasoning salt because it's so delicious. Thank you. No MSG in any of our products. All natural, all good. That's right. So what are we making today? What are we making for Super Bowl? So today we're going to make some Creole shrimp cocktails. They don't take a lot of time. Okay. Really easy to make and everybody loves them. Everybody okay? loves them. Who doesn't love shrimp cocktail? A crazy person. Exactly. So to get started, right. I already sprayed our pan with some nonstick spray. I used Pam. Okay. Then we're going to go right into the shrimp, okay? All right. So I'm just going to drizzle in some olive oil. Well, I would have if I took the top off. Well, that's okay. We like to make things, you know, not spill. So right? that was smart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going <laughs> to take two. Add that in there. And after that, I'm just going to sprinkle in some of my Creole Lady. And this is my Creole seasoning. I'm heavy handed. So I'm going to leave it okay. all in there. So just get it in there. And you know what? There is a couple other ingredients that I normally would add in there, but I want them to go to your site to get the recipe, okay? Oh, so. she's teasing us. Yes. But first, start with the Creole Lady seasoning. Yes, Creole. Right. Okay, I'll give you the other one. The other is a seafood Aww. seasoning. It's seafood magic by Rosamy, of course. Okay. And then I'm just going to toss the shrimp, make sure they are nicely coated. And once they are, we're gonna start grilling them, okay? Okay. So let's just put them in a pan. And you know shrimp does not take a long time at all. It doesn't. It almost, it just immediately starts exactly, to Exactly, right? So you can get them in there quick, right? Yes. Um, is there a reason why you use this, um, like, giant tweezer thing? Because it's the only thing I could find. <laughs> I didn't know. You know? It made it easier to grab yeah. You know, so. I mean, hey, you know, every chef has their way. Yeah, you I mean, if I was at home. I would have believed you. Right? If I was at home, girl, I would be using my hands. But I'm on TV. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Rosie, you can always use your hands on New Day set. This okay. is your home here, okay? Right, so let me dig in. No, All I'm playing. Right. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and let these cook on each side for about two minutes, okay? All right. I'm gonna flip that over. As you see, it's not taking a lot of time it's already at all. cooking okay so while that's cooking oh, that's I'm gonna nice. let you mix up the actually no I'm not gonna let you mix it up this time you don't trust you've me. done enough today <laughs> so all right you go over there I'll come over here cuz I okay. want to smell the Creole lady seasoning oh it smells good girl oh so for my cocktail shrimp yeah cocktail sauce I'm not just gonna use cocktail sauce okay I'm gonna mix up some things and make it magical so one of those ingredients that I like to use is chili sauce mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you and with then, the shrimp. Yeah, let's okay. do that. You I can, can flip that. those on over. So I got the chili sauce up in there. I'm okay. gonna go behind you. All right. I'm gonna move this over because I am not accident prone. Okay. I am all the time. That's why you left the lid on the olive oil. You know me. <laughs> and now I'm gonna use this stuff called Worcestershire that I always say wrong. So Worcestershire, Worcestershire, right? Worcestershire, 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 W sauce, okay? Let's add a little bit of that in there. And then, just gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Okay. Gonna go behind you again. How's that shrimp coming along? It's coming along pretty good. Okay. It's coming along. I'm sorry, my, my burner See? is not quite getting everything evenly here, so I got a couple that are still oh, trying to make okay. their way to good, but. It's looking good. All right. So now I'm going to add in a little horseradish. So you're making your own cocktail sauce. Well, I'm fake making. You fake know? making. <laughs> no, I had a horseradish. It's probably gonna be better than the best I've ever tasted. Of course it is. I'm making it, girl. Because Rosie's making it, and you know it's good. <laughs> Ketchup. Ketchup? Yep. All right, just good old-fashioned ketchup. I know you don't like tomatoes, but you're gonna like this, okay? I mean, I like ketchup. I just don't like tomatoes in the raw. I like ketchup, I like sauce, but okay. when they're raw, they freak me out a little I bit. I could deal with that. Okay. So now we're gonna add some lemon juice, yeah. and I have my cute little lemon juice squeezer here. That's cool. Yeah, you can get this from rosamayseasons.com as well. Okay. Lemon juice. Oh, look at that. I know, how cute, right? I love that. All right. All right, and then you just whisk it all up together? Yeah. Really easy. This smells so good cooking. And I mean, and honestly, it just smells so fresh. Yeah. If I came into someone's house for Super Bowl and it smelled like this, I'd be so excited. So you know what we can start doing now? What can we start doing now? We're going to turn the heat off for okay. the shrimp because you know if you cook shrimp too much, it's going to be gummy. And rubbery. And everybody's going to talk about you and say Rosie had her made it like that, so I can't have that. So let's turn that off. <laughs> you don't want your reputation exactly. tarnished through my bad cooking. <laughs> I, okay. I guarantee you. I'm gonna add in the sauce here. Okay. 
and we're gonna start adding some shrimp, okay? Okay. This so is, how do you want me to put it in? You can just pile it on top. You don't have to be cute with this. Okay. Oh, you don't. This you is, don't have this to do it. This is for good eating, not cute eating. That's. I like okay. that. It's you know when they take you to. All right. Only got a 30 seconds left. I do want to try this, but I also want to ask you what other recipes because I know you have a lot of recipes. Oh my gosh, I have everything. Books. So you can get my baked barbecue chicken, okay. you know, chili. You know, chili's always good. We're going to put a little lemon there to make it mm. kind of look cute. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I told you. That Creole lady stuff makes all the difference. Of course. Rosa May Seasons is where it's at. It's local. The lady that made it from she's, Seattle, Washington, born and raised. So she's right here. It's right local. Here. So, y'all go to iHeartRecipes.com. Get some free recipes. I have it all there. There you go. All right. We have the perfect recipes for you guys. <laughs> but I think you got to start with the Swedish meatball, which okay. we call the manic meatball. Okay. All right. All right. All yeah. right. So, a Swedish meatball yes. is, is all right. That sounds good. So, let's get started. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a panade, which is uh, breadcrumbs. Okay. And it's mixed with milk, so it's nice and moist. Yeah. And then we're gonna give you the hard job while I'm mixing this. Okay. Is we are gonna have you mix the meat. So we have wow. a mixture That's of- a lot of meat right there. A lot of meat. All right, so it's gonna we roll up a, my sleeves then. Good idea. Okay, so yeah. we have a beef and a pork mixture. Okay. So this is a traditional Swedish meatball. Again, at Manic Meatballs, we call it the manic meatball. The, the manic meatball. Yeah, All right, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. Okay, so go ahead and get your hands in there. Okay. And the secret of a uh, manic meatball is actually the nutmeg. So that's the, what gives it the sweetest really? flavor. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Nutmeg in, and okay. So this is how much meat is this right here? So I this, mean, look at this. Yeah. So this is five pounds of beef and about two and a half pounds of pork. All right. Okay. So all right. Get. Yep. Let's go just ahead and start get in there. doing this. All right. There. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in nutmeg. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. Equal parts salt. How much nutmeg was that? Was that like three tablespoons? Yeah, no, I, yeah, actually it was five tablespoons. Oh, okay. Equal uh, parts salt and coarse pepper. How many meatballs will this make? This will make about 100 meatballs. Okay, all right, okay. Good to know. Yeah. You know what? Good to know. Yeah, right. you need a lot of meatballs, because I'm telling you, these will be the first things to go at a party, <laughs> especially when they're wrapped in bacon at the end here. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Is so, that where we're going with this? We are, we are. Yes, all right. Okay, so then we have already sauteed these onions. All right. But it doesn't seem like a lot of onions for yep. all these meatballs, but About right. the same amount, a third cup of sauteed onions, and then lastly is a liquid egg. Liquid egg. Yeah. Does that just mean you? So that's Stirred the binder. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the binder. So it's gonna actually keep the meatball in a meatball form. Okay. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this um, breadcrumb mixture. Okie dokie. And then we're gonna mix all. Why do you um, mix the breadcrumbs in the in the liquid first? So it's not a dry meatball. It's really moist. Which okay. I know people love that word, but hey, we're, we're a meatball restaurant. I don't know so why that word is so polarizing. <laughs> Like, I know so many people who are like, don't say that word. <laughs> so I won't not, say it again in case you don't like it. But. Yeah, it's very uh, uh, juicy meatball. Yeah. And again, we're going to bake it and then fry it. So we do need a lot of the, the moisture in there. So. Okay. How am I doing? You're doing so good. I am You're doing massaging so good. this meat. It's like you've made meatballs before. I, I think you and Joseph are like doing this on meatballs your free time. Meatballs are, uh, that's a thing. Yeah. I, I do have a question though, because yeah. you don't want to overly like work the meat, right? Right, right. Actually, we definitely don't want to overwork it, but a little bit more, you can't actually see the breadcrumbs when you know you've got it about, okay. about the right mixture. All right, all right. So say I keep doing this. Yep. And then what's next? Okay, so the next step is we're gonna actually make the meatball into the balls. Okay. So we are going to use this little scoop. Um, now, I was gonna tell you, you don't have yeah. to wear the gloves. Oh. But I'm gonna, I, I did okay, just well, to get I in here. Okay, I work in a restaurant, so. Okay, all right, fair I enough. I sure do like I trust gloves. you. Yes, right. yes, food safety first, right? Okay, yeah, okay, absolutely. So we're gonna do a couple of these, and then I'm gonna kind of show you what the okay. next steps are as well. All right, go Okay, ahead. so what we do is we just do a one ounce scoop. Okay. And we roll it into a nice ball. Into a yeah. nice ball. Oh, okay, yeah. oh, I see, all right, okay. There's your meatball. Let me try this. Yeah. So this is just like a, a simple thing. Yeah. Because that's where I always struggle with my meatballs. I try to eyeball it, and then, <sighs> You know, it doesn't always work out, but that's perfect. Okay, yeah. so we keep throwing them in there. Yeah, and then so you where? go do that, and then I'm okay. going to do the next step. So we have our, this is a, a thick cut applewood smoked bacon. Okay. So we've tried all of the different bacon uh, types, and yep. actually, this is actually really, really good. So this is a nice thick bacon. It holds up under cooking, and it gives you that bacon flavor that you're going to okay. really look for. Okay, so you got three. We actually skewer them at the restaurant with three at a time. Okie doke. And the trick here is you're going to wrap the whole meatball in bacon, and then okay. you're going to skewer it through that side. So it actually keeps the, the bacon on the meatball, of course, right? So I'm going to do three at a time. Okay. 
So what if like I, I'm, I'm running last minute party. I yeah. don't have time to make my own meatballs. Can I do it with a pre-made meatball and then bake it? Or is yes, that going to be course. too nasty? Well, I mean, you're going to want to come to Manic Meatballs and order these. You know what? But That's such a good point. <laughs> But Forget definitely, it. definitely you can get a pre-made meatball, although the first to go at the parties like we were talking yeah. about. But pre-made meatball and then um, they, they, usually they're already baked, but you bake them first and then okay. you can f uh, wrap the bacon, in, the meatball in the bacon and then okay. finish fry them. And finish, wait, finish fry them? Yeah. So what okay, we're going to do Let's is, talk about that. Let's okay. talk about that. So we have, by the magic of TV, already baked meatballs. And now these, you fry after we baked them? Yes. So you're going to put them in the oven for 350 for okay. 16 minutes. So they're going to come out looking like this. They're all cooked now, essentially. Now they're all cooked. You could eat them, but you want the bacon to be nice and crispy. Yes, we do. Yeah. And so that's what we do is we pan fry them. So you want to pan fry them until okay. the bacon is visibly the, the crispiness that you like. Oh, so we right. will put a couple okay, in here. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Tell me about this concept for your restaurant, Manic Meatballs, because I know you also make an Italian meatball. We do. You make all the different meatballs. Yeah. Fast food meatballs, essentially. Where did yes. you get up with this idea? So my husband is Swedish, so and he was always making these. We were making them for the football team, for our kids, mm -hmm. for different holidays. Nice. Yeah, and so I just, and I uh, came from a business-owning family, and so I just really was like, I want to have a business. And then... Um, I kept thinking, the more we made this, I'm like, I think there's actually a concept here. And then, you, and then you opened during the pandemic. Why? Why? Well, I, the joke is that we're pretty ballsy. Ah, you're my favorite person today. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't have a meatball restaurant and not be ballsy, right? I so. mean, I love yeah. a pun, and that's, that, it, that's great. So, so you opened the restaurant during yeah. the pandemic. You still find a way to thrive. Yes. And then Best in Chow yeah. finds you. Tell me about that. Yeah, so Best in Chow asked to submit a couple ideas. And mm -hmm. of course, like the bacon wrap meatball, that's pretty unique, right? Yeah. So we definitely wanted to have something that um, that would stand out. Okay. And so nobody else is doing a bacon wrap meatball. So these look pretty close to done. Okay, I got you here. Oh, okay, here, we'll put them right here on this oh, plate. Oh, we're going to put them on that plate. We're right ready okay. for you. Okay, and then, um, so we got chosen for the, for the show. And of course, it was a comedian that helped us do it. And he had a lot of fun with meatballs let's say that and meatball jokes yeah and a lot of meatball jokes but then um anyway we were a finalist so we didn't make it quite to the end but we should have obviously you obviously. can tell us if you think we would have i will i will i'm about to eat this meatball right yeah. now um so by the way what is this little sauce you got here okay so the other thing so we just keep coming up with good stuff at manic meatballs we mm -hmm. do have five meatballs every day we have a, a vegan um, impossible ball actually oh good and so the other thing that we have here i'm gonna leave this one in here okay. um the other thing we have is our manic sauce so manic sauce is a house-made fry sauce okay that's delicious with anything It'll but it's really good with our bacon wrap meatballs okay so it's a house-made fry sauce but it comes with um, lingonberries. Lingonberries. I is like love our lingonberries. It's ingredient. such a Swedish yeah. uh, uh, tradition. Yeah. Um, and so, I really want to try this meatball. It's a little hot. Woo! Then I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get in there. Okay. Mm. Mm. Go eat her meatballs. Go eat them all. Holy, holy keto Batman! This is delicious. Delicious. Oh my god! I got hug you for this. Yay! Mm. Whether you watch the Super Bowl for the love of the game or whether you're watching for the commercials, there's one thing we all agree on. It's the snacks. We love Super Bowl snacks. All week long, we're sharing our New Day favorites, and today, producer Rebecca is sharing hers. We're making mini taco salads. But yes. before we get to that, you've actually prepared a special beverage for us. What is this? This is... Um the tears of 49ers. <laughs> the tear wow. Not any shade at all in this drink. <laughs> Not at all. Te How does the tears I of 49ers taste? Okay, Silty? so it's got um, squirt and some like white um, tequila. Ooh. Right? Oh my gosh. Mm, well, this will get you through a, a loss of a game, that's for sure. But too much will yeah. make you lose your our, um, salad. Our husbands are both 49ers fans and they're. Lots of tears. Lots of tears. I'm still hearing about it, by the way, like a week and a half later. I mean, maybe this will help them get their minds. I off hope of so. It, I okay. hope so. Okay, so, so let's get started. How do we make taco salads. mini taco salads? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the little shells. Oh, okay. And instead of tortillas, we're gonna use little wonton wrappers. So oh, you just stick them very in. Very clever. Here. Just one or two in each. Um, you know what? You could do two. Two makes it a little bit more stable. Do you want to do a couple of them here? There's sure, like I got four. you. I got you. Um, 
And you can either do it with like the regular size tins if you want them that are a little bit bigger or the little mini. I like the little mini ones. They're pretty cute. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to cross them like this oh, like so that make it look bigger. That's cool. And then you just spray it with a little bit of olive oil in olive there. Olive oil. So you don't spray the pan oil. before you spray no, it in there. Yeah, you're okay. good. <laughs> Getting crazy over here with the oil. Um, and then um, you bake them at 350 for five minutes and they okay. come out looking like this. How cute! It's like a little mini taco bowl. Yeah. Okay. And then and then you just fill it with all your favorite stuff. So you ground beef obviously to fit in there. So oh, I this actually, is ground turkey. Yeah, I like ground turkey. That's just my preference. But you could do like carnitas. Now, you do, do you if you were gonna do this at your house with the Super Bowl Sunday yeah, party, yeah. would uh -huh. you just leave it as a bar or would you make pre make them for I someone? I mean, you really could do it either way if you don't want mm -hmm. if you don't like people touching your food. Like well, I mean, I don't mind if a host touches that. my food, but um. And I know, like, some people don't believe in vegetables for Super Bowl, so you wouldn't have to do the shreddus. Mm. I know you're not a big fan of the tomatoes, but, like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody could do their own thing. Or you could pre-make them. It's super, super easy. That is delicious. Right? I will say. Maybe just one wonton shell. Oh, okay. A little bit thick. two might be just too hard to get through. Oh, oh, okay. It depends on how much crunch you want. Sure. And I guess um, if you only do it with one, you run the risk of it being just a little bit soft. Ah. So. Or just a little flimsy. Yeah. These ones you made with a tiny little one. I like those. These are little Aren't bite sized. You could just pop it in your mouth. I mean, I'm I would. It. I don't know. Wait. To, yeah, do try it. See how it comes. <laughs> this is a little crunchy. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. And by the way, if you're not a monster like some people, you can actually add a little sour cream. You want some on yours? Absolutely not. <laughs> nope. All right, thank you so much, Rebecca. Well, we are sharing the recipe for these mini taco salads. Just head over to our website or just text the word recipe to 206-448-4545. We'll get it right away, easy peasy. If you think that beer and soda are the only beverages that go with a meat lover supreme, well, think again. Master sommelier Chris Tongi joins us now to share his favorite wine and pizza pairings. And first of all, yeah. T say your last name for me. Tangi. Tangi. I was, I, did you like that? You tried? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is on TV. Uh, uh, I did try to add a little swank to it. But, all right, Tangi. That works. That works. Um, let's it. talk pizza. Let's cool. talk about pizza and wine because I yeah. have known for many years this has been great, but I don't think I've ever really put much thought into what goes with what. So I think that's super exciting. Yeah, so you know, beer goes great, of course, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's refreshing, you drink it cold, it can be very aromatic and delicious, but my argument why wine is better mm -hmm. is that wine has acid, right? It has, brings freshness. When you take a, uh, a sip from your glass, you're like, oh man, everything just gets washed away, makes your mouth water, makes you want to eat more. So it actually works really, really well. Um, and it's less filling too, like that old funny commercial, but it's true, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, we have a whole host of wines here and probably ones that you're not expecting. Well, that's what I'm excited about. And I really love that a master sommelier actually sees the benefit of pairing these together. So it looks like we've got bubbles for the first one. Yeah, who doesn't like bubbles, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I love me some bubbles. <laughs> so here we have some Prosecco. Okay. This is coming from northern Italy. Cheers. Mm, cheers. Um, so this is made from the Glera grape from an uh, area around Venice called oh. Veneto. Okay. And um, a lot of sparkling wines, aka champagne, that we're all probably most familiar with, are super expensive because they're a wine of process and they take a long time to make. So yes. that's why they're expensive. But this is a slightly different process, which makes it uh, less expensive to produce and um, makes it more approachable for everyone. But it's so. a sparkling wine is not as expensive as the champagne. Right. Okay. So champagne's the region, sparkling wine's the category. Hope Got it. Meaning bubbles. See? This yeah. is why I love having a sommelier yeah. here. Okay. So what kind of pizza is this? So this is just your classic margarita. Okay. Uh, so it would be tomato sauce, mozzarella, and uh, finished with basil. So kind of the uber classic uh, pizza here. So this is a very simple pairing, right? Okay. So you eat the pizza first and then drink the champagne. Either way. No, there are no rules here, okay? Um, <laughs> Well, food and wine pairing can be as you know fun and, and simple mm -hmm. as you want it to be or as complex as you want it to be. So Ooh. you don't have to stress about, is this right? You know, people think about wine as being this uh, oh, ultra intimidating thing. It doesn't have to be. Just that, this actually is really refreshing mm. after the right? pizza. It's just very mm -hmm. refreshing and I'm gonna eat that. So don't don't eat my, the rest of my pizza. Okay, well mm. clearly Mark, what is mm. yours and what's mine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is this wine? One last thing. See, I just like 
flushes everything away yeah, off your palette. And you're does. like, okay, I'm ready for more. Yeah, right? I am ready for yeah. more. Yeah. Awesome. So next we have uh, some Pinot Noir from the south of France. Okay. Pinot Noir grows all over the world. It's a very famous variety. It's been in a lot of movies, et cetera, et cetera. Pinot Noir is my favorite wine. Did they oh. tell you that? Oh, I, well, that's why I picked it. Ah, oh, stop. Yeah. Um, so here we have a meaty pizza. So this is sausage, pepperoni, and uh, ricotta cheese. Oh, yeah. Um, so really here, again, you have the acidity of the wine, but also you have uh, tannins, which pair really well with proteins. So. Oh. Works well okay. with those meaty bits on there. And there's a lot of protein with the cheese and the meats. Exactly, yeah, not just the meat, but also the cheese, okay. absolutely. I'm yeah. gonna take your piece because it looks better than mine. Okay, <laughs> we can, we can swap. What? So we have the cheese. Mmm. It's got that, like like you expect, kind of fatty in there. Mm. Wow, that really does explode in flavor. Yeah, so you have a lot of um, dark red and black fruits here, mm -hmm. right? Cranberry, plum, cherry. Um, all mm. those things help to kind of reinforce the tomato in the sauce because tomato is technically a fruit, right? Um, and you get some of those kind of almost fruity characteristics. That off is of it. literally delicious. Yeah. I mean, I've had Pinot Noir with a pepperoni pizza before, but I don't think I've appreciated it as much as I do with you today. Thank you. All Thank right. you. All right, this is another, okay, this okay. pizza here. <laughs> It's a controversial pizza. Mm -hmm. Ham and pineapple, Hawaiian pizza, also one of my favorites. Um, but what would you pair, th I mean, I would, I, I, what do you pair it with? So this is a, kind of a tough one, right? Okay. Um, because you have fruit. Salty and sweet. Salty and sweet, right? It's like, but it, that's aw that's the awesome part about it, right? You, you take a chocolate chip cookie and you put uh, sea salt on it, right? Mm -hmm. That's pretty common now, but a few years ago it was not. And uh, when I first saw it, I was like, what is going on here? I don't want salt on my sweet, right? But yeah. it actually works really well because it contrasts that. And your palate's like, oh, this is sweet, this is salty. So same thing here. We've got the sweetness plus the acid of the pineapple. It works really well with the Riesling. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, I don't drink Riesling. Yeah, it's, There's, it has sugar. I was gonna say high sugar content gives yeah. a little headache sometimes if you drink too much of it. Well, that's probably But just alcohol. don't drink too much of it. Probably alcohol more than sugar, but oh. um, <laughs> that was the sugar. this is a dry one. Uh, okay. So there's there's no sugar to this, and actually most of the Riesling that's produced is dry. The sweet ones are great too for certain applications, but uh, the dry ones are great but for a lot more. So, for a ham and pineapple pizza, you definitely want a dry one, is what you're saying? Yeah, okay. I would. That's what I would recommend. Um, so you have actually kind of tropical fruits in this Riesling. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, notes of mango, mm. pineapple, papaya, mm. etc. So it bridges those similar flavors really, really well. Um, they also can tend to be a little bit lower alcohol too, which is kind of nice. Mm. Um, while so, you yeah. were saying it, I was smelling it and, and t smelling all those fruits. Mm -hmm. And when you taste it, it's very smooth together. Yeah. If you don't like ham and pineapple pizza, you should try it just to pair it with this Riesling because that is really, that is really good. Oh. And if you did like your wine with a little bit of sweetness, you could do an off dry Riesling and then you could add a little jalapeno to this. Oh. So you get spicy and sweet and it's awesome. Now you're so, cooking so with good. gas. Yeah. Oh, I love it. All right, finally, we have my, my other favorite wine, Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. And this is a this is a beautiful pizza. This is, uh, what kind of pizza is this? So this is uh, prosciutto. Uh, yes. And it's finished with some fresh arugula. So you get this kind of herbaceousness from mm -hmm. the arugula, which pairs really well with the herbaceousness of the wine itself. So Sauvignon Blanc always has this kind of green bell pepper, mm -hmm. sage, rosemary kind of characteristic along with really ripe fruits. Um, and this is one of my favorites from, from okay. Washington here. Let me smell. Uh, very good, very salty. And you. Mm. Oh my gosh. This right here, that is summer. Mm -hmm. That is summer at like a concert. Mm -hmm. I totally, love definitely, it. Definitely, yeah, more of a warm weather pairing. Excuse me, this one you could do Anytime, actually, all of these you could do anytime. I mean, I think this with the arugula, yeah. I mean, this so is fun. actually, and you know what's so fun is that who doesn't love pizza? But what a great way to, I don't know, liven up your pizza night, even with my girlfriends. I can't wait to have them do this. Actually, you just gave me a great idea for the next book club. Everyone brings awesome. a pizza and a wine pairing. For even more recipe ideas from New Day Northwest, text the word recipe to 206 448 4545. Thanks for spending time with us and get out there and enjoy your new day.